not good. Oh shit. Seize the engine, I think. So as you can see, the engine, the piston blew on this bike. So uh, you have to take it apart. Uh, to take it apart, it's actually very, very simple. You take the seat down. There's two bolts over here, one over here and one on this side. Then after you take the seat down, you have to take the gas tank down. There's two bolts, one over here, one on the other side. You have to remove these so the, the plastics will come off the, uh, the radiators. And then there are two bolts here inside here, like right over there. So with a little socket wrench, you'll be able to access them from each side. That's the only thing that holds this tank um, to the frame. And then disconnect it from the carburetor and the, the tank comes out. Once the tank is out, there is a bolt over here. You're gonna need to take this bolt out because what this bolt will do is it'll release the back end of the motorcycle so the airbox can move away because you have to move the, uh, away the airbox because you'll have to disconnect this from here, the carburetor, so the carburetor can be disconnected and it will slide away. So that way you have the uh, uh, access to the reed valve and then you'll have access to the piston itself. You'll have to take the water out. Uh, you'll have to take the water because you'll have to take the piston out. Because you're taking the piston out, you have to take the water out. So uh, there is a hose over here It has a little clamp. You will have to take this clamp and remove the hose. But before you do that, very, very important, on this side of the bike, on this side of the bike, there is a drain bolt. So you'll have to drain all the liquids out. So you have to take this drain bolt out and all the liquids will come out of the radiator. And therefore, after that, you will be able to remove this part over here and then take the hose off. Uh, also, you'll have to remove the exhaust. So there's two springs over here that you'll have to take both of the springs out. Uh, the exhaust is mounted here at the bottom. So on the right side of the motorcycle, there is a bolt. Uh, and also you'll have to remove this part of the exhaust. So this uh, part over here, the pipe and the exhaust have to come off. And there are two bolts that hold it on over here and one over here. And this entire exhaust system has to come off and you're not done. Unfortunately, when people say that these are easy to be rebuilt, uh, there's a lot of work. Uh, I prefer, prefer to take the engine out to work on it. Sometimes you work on, on, on the bike directly. So uh, spark plug will have to come out. The so spark plug will have to come out. All these connectors will have to be disconnected from the carburetor so you could take the carb out and clean it. Might as well if the bike is done. And then the top end part is gonna be very, very simple. The power valve is over here. This one you could just soak into a gasoline and that will get it nice and clean. You'll have to take these four bolts out. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six bolts actually on top. This all these bolts come out. The, you're going to be able to see the piston. And then when you take that one out, then there's like four bolts over here. One on this side, one on this side. You have one over here and another one over here. Uh, to get to this one, you will have to remove this cover for the linkage for the power valve. So you'll have to take this cover off. There is a bolt over there, another one over here. And once those bolts come out, once those bolts come out, this entire cylinder head will be able to be lifted and removed. And then you'll get to the cylinder. And then uh, obviously you'll have to remove the piston. And then uh, I'm going to show you how to put it back together. I'm not expecting to fix the engine from here, but Let's see, just curious. It looks like a melted piston to me. It looks very much like a melted piston. So I have a nicely melted piston over here. Get a new piston and new piston rings and we should be good to go. My top end kit has arrived today. I'm using a uh, Namura, as I said, I haven't invested too much money into the motorcycle. I've heard good things about these kits. Uh, they're cheap. They come with everything that you need. So I'm gonna try to put it on the bike and see how it works today. Um, I don't know if I wanna keep the bike or not, so I wouldn't spend too much money for too expensive stuff. Uh, the kit did come with another uh, shaft, so that's good. It did not come with a bearing, so the bearing I have to salvage, the one that I had before. So the old bearing is gonna go in. The bearing seems to be fine. To lubricate things, I've uh, decided to use the two-stroke oil. It comes with the, um, uh, you know, the oil that you put in the gas. The power valve and everything is adjusted already, so I cleaned it. Um, so everything should be good. Now it's just time to put the rings on top of the piston. So you have to start at the bottom one first because you will have to do the other ring uh, later on. So 
I start from the back over here and then just go over and let it go into the, in, into the channel and then go from the other side and pull on it. Not too hard to bend it, but not too little. And there it is. Um, the piston ring is in and it has to align with this pinhole. Remember that. It has to align with that little pinhole. It has to have free movement. It says in the manual it has to have free movement, so that's very, very important. And this is the second piece. The same thing, I'm gonna loop it up just so it slides a little bit easier over there. And then I'm gonna start from the back. Again, and then go around, go in, and then go around, go in, and there it is, they're both aligned. There's one pinhole over here and one pinhole over here. I'm gonna put a clip on this side, so I'm gonna slide everything from, from, from this side basically into the piston. So to make things easier, I'm gonna install the, the one of the clamps on the piston while it's out, so I don't have to struggle putting it in when I'm, uh, when I'm working on a motorcycle. So this one is gonna just go in here. Actually, it went with my hand in there so I didn't have to compress them too much I think it's time to install the bearing and the uh, piston on the motorcycle so I'm gonna take all my toys the piston has a direction this is the exhaust so it has to go out this way so that's very very important it goes gonna go on a crankshaft like this okay but before you do that you have to put the bearing in so the bearing goes inside this crankshaft Okay, uh, let's see if I could spin the engine a little bit so it's in a more convenient position. Okay, so front goes in, then the shaft. The shaft is going to go through and it has to go to the bearing that is already in the shaft. In the, in, in the the bearing has to go, the shaft has to go to the bearing and it has to go on the other side. There it is. So it, it's just an easy, easy motion and then it stops in the clip that we put on the other side. So basically it just stops into this clip. Now at this point, this is a critical, this is a critical move. What you're gonna do is, so you don't drop anything in the engine because you have to put the clip back on. So you don't drop anything in the engine, you have to cover the top of the engine. Uh, it will fall in either into your uh, water, into your water uh, pathways or into the crankshaft and you don't want that. So right now we have access to it, as you can see over here, but I covered the engine so there's no crap that can fall in there. Okay, and this one fits in pretty easy. Actually, I just pushed it in with my bare hand. Just using my fingernails, you could use a, a metal for it, like a screwdriver or something, but you don't want to scratch anything, so I just pushed it in there and it fit really, really nice. Make sure it is in a safe location where it's not gonna come off. If you want to be anal about it, you can actually put a little uh, pin uh, a screwdriver and just flip it around so the, the connection is here on top, so therefore there's no way that it's gonna come out. Next step, um, the kit comes with a gasket kit, that all the gaskets you need for it, so you can take your cover off because nothing can fall in there and then this gasket go on top of it uh, remember there's bigger holes over here so the bigger holes are towards you so this gasket goes over here and it will just align with all the stuff that you have in the hardest part is to put the cylinder head on the, the cylinder or the piston so first uh, make sure that it's clean that's very, very important. As you can see, the first person view ended and the third person view started because I'm gonna try to do this again. At least I'm not putting it upside down. It could be a lot worse for me. But I don't understand how they wanted you to do this with just two hands. Like, aligning the pin into that hole. It's hard by itself. Putting it in here, it's a nightmare. After an heroic fight, 
I think I got it in and I got him in a line because there's free movement. We're back to the first person view. Okay, the cylinder seems to be aligned properly over here. And now all we have to do is just get the bolts. I'm just gonna go one at a time. I need a number 14 for the inside because that's the only way you can get to the inside one. So number 14. I'm gonna do a cross pattern. So I always test it out. 42, 40, 40, 40, 40. I'm sorry, it says 30 foot pounds, so let's see. There it is, so that's 30. We could get here, 30. Now obviously, you can't put it in here, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna work there. So those I have to do by hand. And I have to see how strong these are and just go by feel. Oh wow, that's pretty much a lot. Okay. First thing we're gonna check right now the free movement of this piston. So there it is. Obviously you don't wanna move it too much, but there's oil on the sides. The piston moves really, really nice and easy. It's time to reconnect the uh, valve. And then this linkage goes over this. There is a little aluminum piece that you wanna make sure that stays over there as a spacer. And then this piece goes over it. So this will just have to go over it. You have to lift it a little bit up and then it will just fit nicely in there. And then you put the uh, bolt back in. 43 let's see so don't confuse inch and foot pounds because that could be very bad so there is 41 42 43 inch pounds so now we are ready to torque this now we're ready to torque this there it is so that's all has to be 43 foot pounds and then I always release the pressure out of it so I don't have any problems as far as uh, breaking it but this is uh, 43 inch pounds it's time to install the cover uh, this cover has a special rubber gasket for the bottom part I got it cleaned out not as good as I wanted but there's really very little movement over here so this one installs over here like this this one just keeps the oils and stuff in so it has a certain shape that it has to fit in. There it is. And now, this power valve cover, oh, the mechanism, the link for the power valve fits in here. There it is. And then the four bolts that I saved, they go in here. 41, 42, 43. There it is. And that's good. That's good. That's good. I'm waiting for a click. There it is. The kit comes with uh, this gasket set. Now, uh, I told you this is the first time I'm doing so I don't know why they send you these because I don't know where they go. It must be like a universal set for some other motorcycle because I don't have that anywhere. But I do have these. So these are the black ones and they one go in here. A special place that it has to fit on top of the cylinder head and then there's another one that goes on the outside and I'm gonna oil this thing too just uh, just so it lets the, the the gaskets flow a little bit easier just oil it a little bit so it sticks a little bit better and lets them slide to their own where they, they belong and then let's try to put the cylinder head in. Okay, this feels really nice and tight. That's 15, 16, 17, 18 foot pounds. That's a torque that these need to be tightened as. So I'm gonna go just slowly, get them all tight, get them in the groove.
Okay, that's the end of the bolt. Okay, so now we're gonna go and crisscross. So let's find the. That's 18. This one, let's see. That's 18, 18. That's good. So they're all at 18. The motor mount goes next. I kept the bolts together. So it was installed from this side to the other side. It has a washer and a nut. So washer and nut. And these are the top ones. We go through. Line up, washer on the other side. These are 24 and then we have 50 for the big fat one at the bottom. Uh, we're not nowhere near done, so the spark plug connector goes on top. Hose for the water because we have to refill the system. But before we do that, uh, this is the the CDI. So we're gonna have to put this one here. It has a little track that has to go in and then just fits and sits here. Number six socket. And then I have a, a ring that has to go around. So this is compression ring. Oops, it's not open at all. I don't even know how I took it out. It needs to be open a little bit. This is a radiator uh, hose that carries the heat, the water with all the heat and everything out of here. So I'm gonna get this one nice and tight. There are no torque specifications of so this is kind of like just hand tight. Make sure you don't break the thread. I already cleaned this one and rejet it. Very, very important. Uh, have jetted to stock because that's why the, the piston blew up initially because it was not jetted properly. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the back. As you can see, the air box is out, out of the way. And now the carburetor can fit to its place. This tab has to align. This is before the reed valve. Uh, this tab has to align and there is like a, a Phillips. This will tighten the carburetor in place. You want to make sure you don't breathe false air because that's very bad for these motorcycles. They run lean, they run hot, they blow up. Ready to put the air box in after we connected all the wiring. So the wiring is connected, now we have to push this air box in. Now remember, this air box has to slide in there and what I like to do is I look and put a little bit of grease on it. Um, you either could use oil, I use two stroke oil, just so it slides a little bit easier. So just to slide a little bit easier, I like to put a little bit of a two-stroke oil in this groove over here. So it slides easier on the carb. So it's a very nice seal. I have a very, very nice seal on both sides. I just verified. And now it's time to get the bolt tight. I need a simpler screwdriver. This screwdriver would do it. There's like a little bolt over here. I know it's a little bit dark, but you could feel it. You don't even have to see it. And this holds the back end of the bike together. The exhaust on the two-stroke, it's uh, very important to have these rings checked. There's uh, two rubber rings over here that keep the spout and all the crap that wants to get out from the motor so it spits it on the back. So if you don't want to have a dirty bike, make sure that these uh, rubber seals are good. If they're not good, replace them. The pipe installation is not rocket science. It has only one place to go. Here it is. So it only has one place to go and there's two springs that hold it together. So one is longer, one is shorter. The longer one is at the bottom, the shorter one is on top. So 
a pair of locking uh, pliers because what you want to do is you want to lock your your pliers on it so you could pull on it as much as you want without these it's impossible to put the exhaust in and you're just gonna work yourself out to death okay and that's the first year goes on this side and then you just have to pull on these things and then let it go this is a high temperature silicone and it's gonna be used to merge these two together uh, if you don't use this one it, it will spew and lick leak uh, stuff all the time so these two merge together over here really nice there it is and then there is a bolt that holds it here this one is for here and this one is here we're ready to put a tank back on so I didn't even take the plastics off of it this one just slides in here and with a very very long socket attachment you could uh, just get to the bolt there it is get to the bolt it's in a very awkward position but it's not too ho too hard to get to it we're ready to put the seat back on very important not to forget to refill with coolant no big philosophy now one thing we have to do now is uh, this machine needs to be break in so uh, to break in the engine you have to run 15 to 1 oil so it's going to be very very rich in oil so what i'm going to do right now the uh, gas tank is empty so i already emptied it out uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a little bit of a mixture 15 to 1 so like a chemist, I had to make myself a little bit of, of two-stroke oil to do the break-in. So I made myself a little contraption over here. So here it goes. The first fuel in a long time. So let's see, fuel on. That should go in the carb nice. I need the bike this way in case the fuel went on the other side. Okay. Now let's see. Choke on. So choke has to come up. And let's kick this thing. I'm actually a little bit terrified of kicking it in. It's been done for such a long time. I was supposed to let it run for a minute and a half. It's making the right noise, that's for sure. Part two of the break-in period. Now I have to take it out for a ride on the street. So, let's see how that's gonna work out. And then we'll have to let the engine cool off. So five minutes, very, very small speed, couple of gears here and there. Uh, Okay, the clutch was completely out of sync with everything that was happening.
second warm up procedure. I guess now you could open it to full throttle, but just for a short period before you bring it back to like normal. So I'm gonna try that real quick and see how it does. The fuel's on. Thank you. 